Now, probably in the next couple of videos, we'll be discussing on how to advertise the default route inside your IGB protocol. Now, from the basic CCNA studies, what you have learned, if you just take an example, I got a router, my head office, which is connecting to my ISP router, and from where I'm able to access the internet. So if you want to provide access to internet, what we generally we do, we just need to go to this head office router. We just need to say IP route, and then we say uh, 0000. That's my destination network ID. And then we say 0000, and the next stop address, whatever the ISP address. Let's say the next stop address is 2.2.2.2. .2 so we just need to type 2.2.2.2. .2 so once we configure this command, probably what we can uh, we can do is we whatever the resources or the users in the LAN if they want to access internet if they want to go to yahoo.com google.com they simply send it to the gateway and the router is going to maintain one default route saying that s star which is going to say that any unknown packet it can be yahoo google gmail it will be simply forwarded to isp and from there it reaches the internet and reaches the specific yahoo server and then you get your access so this is something what we have learned in our basic CCN studies by just configuring the default route we can we can access for any unknown destinations but what if i require the same thing to be done for my branch offices so take an example here i got a head office and i got a default route towards this side so that default route is so what if i want to have the same thing let's my requirement is to ensure that all my branch offices in the bottom here now these branch offices should also be able to access internet so in this kind of scenarios we've got a different possible solutions like okay so we have some couple of branch offices and you want to provide access to internet to each and every branch office so what generally we can do is we can have a separate isp connection connecting to each and every branch office which means i can say okay router a branch office so you've got a separate isp connection and from there you can access internet now similarly we can have a separate isp connection from the for the v branch office as well a separate isp connection for the c branch office and a separate isp connection for the separate branch office and the same way i can go to each and every router i can simply configure ip route this 0000, 000, 000, 000 and next stop the isp address so i can contact the local service portal on that particular branch office but again the problem with this one is uh, the first thing it's not scalable i can say because you know if you have some hundreds of branch offices so you need to go to you need to have a separate uh, isp connection on each and every branch office that's the one thing so uh, practically you know uh, there, there might be some locations where you don't have a isp connection so maybe you don't have an access to internet or isp connections probably or also so we don't have any centralized uh, security which can apply because you know if you're connecting to uh, from this way to isp from each and every branch office the problem is you need to install or configure some firewall which needs to uh, ensure that there is no unauthorized access coming into your network now if you're if you're doing if you're having a separate uh, isp connection connecting in each and every branch office it becomes really difficult to provide security so instead what we can do is we can have a default route pointing towards the isp from the main head office and what we can do is we can we can say that any branch office let's say a branch office if you want to go to any uh, web page or anything on the internet you just need to go to the head office and now head office knows exactly where is yahoo google gmail maybe maybe it just have a default route pointing towards the isp and then the isp will ensure that the packet reaches the yahoo server now this is something what we can do now if when we do this the main advantage we get here is we can have a centralized security here let's say we can install and configure some firewall and any packet coming and going outside your network maybe coming from any one of the branch office i can have a centralized security here and at the same time you don't need to have a separate internet access only the thing is what we are doing is we are just sharing the same internet access for all of our branch offices remotely which means every branch office if they need to go to any outside network they should go via the main head office so that's something we we can do that's something it is possible and that's what we are going to see here how it is possible and how we can do in different routing protocols so we're not going with the first option so i'm not going with the first option so probably you can think of another option okay you are saying that okay head office from head office i want every branch office to go to head office now how it is possible now to make that possible what we can do is we can have a separate default route pointing towards head office 
separate default root pointing to a head office. That is one solution you might think about. Anyway, don't go with this one. So separate uh, default root pointing towards the head office. But again, if you have a separate default root, sometimes it will create the loops. So that's something we generally don't want to do. So as of now, I just try to list the possible options which you can think about. But generally, uh, I don't go with this one, a separate ISP connection. Even I don't go with the default root pointing towards the head office. Instead, we can say we can advertise the default root. So whatever the default root I'm having here, what's the default root I'm having? I'm having a route called IP route 0000, 0000, 0000. And then what is the next stop? Let's say the ISP next stop is 2.2.2.2. .2 what I'm doing is I'm going to advertise this default route inside my IGP. Now your IGP can be any IGP, any IGP protocol. It can be RAP version 2. Probably it can be OSPF. It can be your EAGRP. It can be any other routing protocol. Okay. So what we are doing is whatever the default route we have, we are saying that, okay, this default route, we are advertising this default route to each and every branch office, which means already we already have this head office and branch offices are already communicating with each other through some dynamic routing protocols, maybe RIP or EHRP and OSPF. Um, I'm also sending this route into that advertisements. Now there are two different ways to do that. Now one option is we have something called a distribution. I can I can redistribute this default route into my dynamic routing protocol. Let's say I'm using RIP. That is one option. So we'll see these things practically in our next uh, videos more in detail with practical scenarios. So one thing we can do redistribution. There is one possible solution I can think about. And there is one more possible solution is we can we can apply some command called default information originate uh, in OSPF and RIP. So don't worry, that is possible. We'll see practically in our next scenarios. So advertising the default route is very much common in most of the company production networks where we actually take one ISP connection going towards the service border from the head office. And we, want, we are sh actually sharing the same ISP connection by all our branch offices. Now it can be any number of branch offices. So that's how it works. So we are just combining this default route and our IGP and we are advertising this default route so that every branch office knows exactly if they want to go to any unknown destinations, they simply need to come to head office and the head office will have a default route which, which sends a packet to ISP and ISP knows exactly where is your uh, public servers on the internet. So that's how the default routing works. Probably in our next scenarios, we'll be getting into some more practical scenarios where we will see initially we'll start with uh, maybe RIP protocol. We'll see in case in your production networks, maybe you're using RIP version two as your dynamic routing protocol, how we can, we can actually advertise the default route. In the later on labs, we'll be seeing how to do that. The same thing using OSP protocol. And also we'll see if you're using EHRP, then how you can advertise the default routes inside the IGP and ensuring that our branch office should be able to access the routes on the internet. So probably in my labs, I'm not uh, connecting to any real, real network internet, but I'm going to assume some of the networks to be the internet routes and we will uh, verify practically in our next videos.